You wouldn't, you wouldn't go to something defiant, right? So it, there's a little defiance in it. Right, that's fine. That's fine. It's I mean, all good. I, you I know just, it's all good. I mean, look, wasn't there a time when, no. when we were okay? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. After Dark. Keep those voice messages coming at 818-253-1693. And, of course, the emails. i got lots of good ones today. They are at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And, of course, I'm here at the Booth Boys. Booth Boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. What's up? What's up? Oh, I have so much today, gentlemen. I have so much. I have so much. But I've got, oh my God, I've got great emails. I've got great videos to get into. Uh, how are you guys? Everybody good? Oh, yeah, dude. We're living the dream in here. We're about you know, to move, man. Figuring this whole thing out. Okay. Well, you mean uh, to Austin, all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. We all get to go, go down there. But, Hell yeah. Um, and uh, me and Christina will have a, a glorious reuniting in the city of Austin. No, Yeah, it's so funny, man. I'm seeing so many comments that are like, man, it's going to be sad when the show ends when they move to Austin. And it's like, the show is not ending when no, the no, studio no. moves to Austin. No, 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 no. We're no, continuing no. We go to a new. Guys. We go to a new level when we go to Austin. We have Christina and the Booth Boys, and it's going to be on, gentlemen and ladies. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, it, it, I look forward to it immensely. I will go down there on a regular <laughs> basis, and we will go. We will do After Dark in Austin, and I'm delighted to do that. I'm, I, I, the Your Mom's House community means a lot to me. I, I ran into a guy. I was in Nashville yesterday, and a guy came running up to me. He, Here's the thing about the your mom's house world. They, they are delightful. They are uh, respectful. They are family people, and they are smart. This guy was a biomedical engineer, and uh, he was just so grateful for what we do here. He was, however, afraid to make eye contact with my wife. I noticed, which <laughs> which was very, which I thought was rather interesting. And I thought that told me what a fan he was of everything. And he, he I said, you know, here's Susan. You, you saw her on where my mom's at. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I gotta go. <laughs> it's like. So there you go. But uh, very interesting. And uh, I, I do, by the way, I will come down there with her and we can get her on uh, where my mom's at a little bit too. Although I, I would suggest you zoom her in before that, but that's up to you guys. How's Christina's leg, by the way? Uh, it's well. Uh, she was in the other day with, uh, with a boot. And, yeah, um, walking on it? Yeah, she was walking on it. I think she bedazzled it with some stickers. and She's tough, man. I tell you, the, the leg's broken, two kids, stand-up career, your mom's house platform. That's, that's a lot, and she makes it look kind of easy. Yeah, dude, she's so punk rock, dude. She is, she's goth. She's so punk, she's goth. Uh, she's never let go of that. Um, so, you know, I have sort of um, super powers of observation. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen. And, um, and I, when I turn them on, you know, it's sort of like Superman using x-ray vision, right? It goes, it just sort of, I see things. And so I walked in today and I noticed something's up with old Annie. Uh, he seemed a little more, I don't know. It was interesting. He was a little less likely to make eye contact. He was sort of little, I wouldn't, it wasn't aloof. It was just sort of like he had, well, first I thought maybe it's because he just masturbated in the bathroom and he felt guilty about it. And so I went into the bathroom. Just I actually had to go to the, to the bathroom myself. And so I sort of did a little exam of the bathroom and things were awfully tidy. Like somebody had really cleaned up. So I thought, well, that's a possibility. Um, uh, any, is that any of what's going on? Is that any of uh, what's going on with any? No, no. no. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. So, okay, I, I fine. So I clean, I, I fully accept. No. Uh, oh, and so I'm, so I'm watching him and then, then he takes this device, which is how we slate this, all the different cameras here. And, uh, and he started walking around going, suck my dick. <laughs> and I didn't, I, I'd not heard that before. Yeah. I didn't really understand what was happening. Perhaps there's an explanation. <laughs> he, and he said it again when he walked into the booth there. And yeah. so I thought I thought that completely went over your head. I was laughing. In, no, in no, nothing head. goes over my head. I may not understand it, but it does not go over my head. So I'll, go ahead. I was laughing in my head, thinking like. <laughs> How did he not hear me say that? Oh, like, oh I heard it. I heard it. Of course, times. of course, I heard. It. I was taking. I was doing a little <laughs> note notations in my head about all the things I wanted to talk to you about, and that was one of them. And so 
Had you just gotten high or something? Did you, did you smoke a bunch of weed before you got in here? No, I just I tried. I did a you know a little experiment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and, and a, am I right that you feel a little guilty about this experiment? Like, no, no guilt. No, I don't. Because I thought no. I was reading guilt, and so until the stuck my dick stuff, and then I was like, <laughs> "What? That's not doesn't seem to pull back on that." Uh, I'm, I'm who just, was that? Who was that directed towards? By the way, just the world, the world, know, the universe. The world. I, I'm just really immature, man. That's that's really what it comes down oh, to. Oh, dude, <laughs> you're way more complicated than immature. <laughs> that's, that, it does not begin to summarize. But 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 so you're immature, and you were saying suck my dick because you were pissed at all of us or something, or a little, no. little defiant. No, I just I just I just say that a lot. I don't know. It's just something well, you that said I say. it with the slate. It was this is literally what, and he came in here. He went like this. He went suck my dick. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> and, and I thought I thought maybe it was a sound check or something, and you guys agreed he would do something funny or no, uh, no, no. Uh, it's funny. I, I did the mm. same thing uh, in front of Rob Eiler actually uh, when when he uh, was in here. Yeah. And same thing. He didn't say anything. And in my head, I'm like, I wonder if they just think that's like standard. Like, it, it sounds like a sound just our check. Protocol. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather you do that than counting, to be fair. I mean, the counting gets a little boring. But Eddie, let me clear this up for you, buddy. Everyone can hear you say, suck my dick. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. You're not it. saying it under your breath. You're saying it at f- <laughs> full voice with great clarity. Holy your diction's shit. good. It is suck my dick. <laughs> it is out there for everybody. So glad I'm back. Uh, so glad I'm back. It's always good to be here. It's really good to have you Thank back. Thank you, man. man. I appreciate and, it. And I want to make it clear, I was not asking you to suck my dick. No, I, I, I thought I did. Clear. It was one of the options, but I kind of ruled it out early. So I, I get that. I get that. It, 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 it felt either like a sound check or some little oppositional defiant part of yourself just letting itself out. You know what it feels like? You know, you know when you're a little kid and you're like, am I invisible? Can anyone see me? Yeah. No, I don't, but you can go on. Oh, well. <laughs> so go, you had that know. experience. <laughs> Interesting. All right, yeah, maybe yeah. that's a little telling of me. Um, I don't know, but that felt a little bit like that, where it's just like, yeah. does anything I say register with yeah, anyone? Yeah, 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 but he's, he's just but, testing it. But you would normally uh, go, hey, hey, or something. You wouldn't you wouldn't go to something defiant, right? So it, there's a little defiance in it. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's I mean, all good. I, you know I just, it's all good. I mean, look, wasn't there a time when, no. when we were, okay. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> Wasn't there a time? <laughs> but just so we can get the no part out of the way, wasn't what, there a time? Wasn't there a time mm-hmm. when we all were like, whatever, 11 or 10, and mm-hmm. we were just walking around talking about, oh, look at my big fat dick, suck my dick. Like, Didn't you guys have that like talking yeah. shit phase? Like in fifth grade, sixth yeah. grade? Sure. I just never stopped. Yeah. I, in, How in, old are you? I, but you know. Not in fifth grade. Not eleven. I hope not. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I did you know? not do that. Uh, it was that was uncomfortable, but I was aware of people doing it. Yeah. So I, I to me, it didn't feel right to do it. I don't know why, but I didn't do that. And and I and, probably because you're I knew, a good person. I know that's ch- probably what. That <laughs> no, 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 that. no. I won't let you do that because I consider you a good person. <laughs> me? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a mistake, Drew. We'll, oh, we'll, we'll see. Well, we're gonna find out about that. I'm planning a <laughs> test for you guys. Oh shit! It's called. I've got, I'm not going to do it today, but an upcoming episode, we are going to do the hair psychopathy checklist. Ooh, I've wee. got that ready to go when the time comes. So stand by, everybody. So it's are you a psychopath, essentially, test list. Uh, uh, it, are we going to be able to gauge which one of us is the biggest psychopath? You're going to. It's not. A, I. I don't actually think it's a great test, but it sort of. It sort of tells you d- direction, like who's directionally is the most psychopathic, and <laughs> uh, you know it could be Chris. I don't know. Who knows? It Probably could be. Is. I yeah. The comedy would be <laughs> as the is? comedy would be. Probably is. Well, but the comedy would be as if it's solo. <laughs> that would be. That would be. That would be a surprise. Um, See, and I always thought Chris was the canary in the coal mine. Like I always thought he was the moral compass of the studio. He so might be. He I might would, be. That's why I suggested to you before we even started recording today. I'm like, hey, we should use Chris's answers as the baseline. Yeah, I know you two. said that. I didn't answer you if you noticed. And I thought, <laughs> we'll talk about that on the air. Canary in the coal mine. Can yeah. we talk about why this man can't just like say things? You, he's, he's he has a a saying. For yeah. everything, yeah. and it's like I I admire it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So I don't know. If I, I'm you, in awe. I don't know if you noticed any, but Nadav is Jewish, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of aphoristic. It starts with Yiddish. It goes from there. There's a lot of sayings. Am I wrong, Nadav? Is oh that, yeah, the, you you're totally correct. I'm a lot of sayings. Canary in the coal line is not one of those sayings, but but there are a lot of uh, 
aphorism of saying. It, my heritage as well. My, my extended family through my dad's side. <laughs> oh I, wait, I, wait. So so you're serious? So like yeah, that, yeah, it, yeah, it's a J thing. But I've yeah, it's, yeah. I, I mean whoa, the fact that he goes to them. That. The fact that most people wouldn't go. Most people they would think even if they thought Canary in the Coal Mine, they think oh I'm gonna sound like an old Jew if I say this. He just goes there. He just says it. And and so you know it's all right. It's good. It's 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 poetry. Certain kind of poetry. No, like, like I said, I, I admire it. I'm yeah. always like, he'll say something that sums up my paragraph of a thought in like two yeah. words. I'm like, how yeah. the fuck do you do that? Why do you always do that? Yeah, yeah. It's efficient. Yeah. It is. It's it efficient. Is. I admire it, bro. Do you, do you have any? It. You have any Yiddish stuff to, to offer us? Like, uh, um, g- gay cock and off and yum, anything like that? Or? Got, you know, like, oh, that's fakakta. Yeah, know, fakakta. That's the, the words, the single word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it sort of starts. I love with that, that brain. It's 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 it, it is that. To be Focaccia? fair, it, no, no, no. But listen, as as always, I try to bring it back to something real. Which is that the the suffering of the Jewish community required them to rely on humor a lot, and and humor there was sort of an aphoristic humor that that c- took hold, right? Yeah. And uh, and so that's you know they they laughed to kind of prevent from the, to deal with tragedy. Oh. Really is what they were doing. So, I, so. Th- that's why uh, they like I don't know. Whenever you come across like a Jewish person, like more often than not, they just have like a n- decent sense of humor. That's yes, why. that's right. Well, I, I it, because it's because it's, we've it, been through a whole. No, it got into the culture very deeply, and uh, it's funny. There's a oh, what kind of road are we going down tonight? But <laughs> but there's a documentary out there I saw on Amazon called "When Jews Were Funny," and and it was implying we're not anymore. And it, well, it was it was interviewing all these old com- comedians. They were all these guys from New York, all Jewish, and all from. They talked about the tragedy that they. There it is, 2013, and uh, and it was very interesting to look at that history. So now there it is. So oh, uh, have a look at it. it it's uh, our Jewish comedians funnier. Oh, look hilarious! At the, and then there's a basket of pastrami and pickles y- on the. Bush. Yeah, yeah. Oh, That's listen, I, yeah, I. They, they were angry. They, you know, some of it is anger too. By the way, uh, I remember dealing with um, Jackie Mason. Jackie Mason was funny, 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 Ooh. funny. But but just when you you know you take a beat, there was just anger would come out underneath it. Oh yeah, and Jackie Mason was the first live performance I ever saw. No kidding. And yeah, he he was meeting. like he's like what you bring me here and there's no bagels. There's no bagels. He's trying to be funny, but he was like no no where are the bagels? <laughs> like, yeah, and then he'd Christ. call you a Nazi <laughs> bastard. Yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> so so it's interesting. Anyway, that's the nature of humor. There's there's and um, I I think comedy may end up being the American poetry of the last part of the 20th century beginning of the 21st century i think i think the african-american community has same exact phenomenon there i think richard Pryor is your poet i think that's your that's your homeric poetry for for 20th century america humbly um all right so so how did i get there so back to annie uh we got we <laughs> oh, all roads lead back to annie oh man so you mentioned something you did say something to me under your breath that i said we would bring up on the show so i'm going to give you the opportunity to Present to whatever degree you feel comfortable. Uh, yeah, I was just saying, I don't know if I should say it because it's like, you know, I, I don't know if it's bad. It's bad, but. It's not I just, bad. I try to, new, it's a, you know, I do these experiments, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to know how my body works, and I don't like asking people and doctors because I don't trust them. So, uh, except except you, Mr. Drew, but. Uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah, I know it's Dr. Drew. <laughs> if he calls me doctor, then he stops trusting me again. <laughs> So go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I wanna, uh, I'm going to go down a whole trust road here. Uh, That's fascinating, shit. but go ahead. I said, uh, uh, <laughs> I tried anxi- anti-anxiety meds today. Tried them. Yeah, like like meds that I was not prescribed. It was just, so so you are know. you still under the influence presently a little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I like just took a lot, yeah. Okay, so that was what I was picking up on that wasn't the weed, it's the Xanax, right? Xanax yeah. you buy? Uh, no. Uh, Lorazepam? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, here's the problem. It, 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 I just know it's anti-anxiety. Yeah. yeah, here's the problem with anti-anxiety. You buy it from? No, I, I didn't buy it. It's uh, it's uh, someone I know's prescription. Uh, yeah, prescription. So, so, so you I know it's a prescribed it. medicine. It's yeah. not something from the street. No, no, no. It's not street. Okay. It's so, street. so let's for everybody out there, the street is very concerning because most of the stuff you buy as anti-anxiety in the street has fentanyl in it, and fentanyl plus anti-anxiety makes you stop breathing. So, first and foremost. And any don't take anything except the anti-anxiety medicine. So, um, how many pills did you take, and how long ago? Uh, I took three. Okay. Um, 
uh, oh God, what time is it? It's, yeah. it's 12. I took it two hours ago. Okay. Three, two hours ago. And so it's going to last four to six hours, maybe mm. more. Mm. Uh, it wasn't clonazepam, was it? Clonopin? Uh, dude, I mean, I, I wish I knew. I, okay, I don't know. It, it was probably one of three. The, the common ones are Alprazolam, Xanax, uh, Ativan, or uh, Lorazepam. So Alprazolam, Lorazepam, or Clonazepam, which is Clonopin. Clonopin lasts a good 12 hours. So you're going to feel like sleeping bad for the rest of the day if, if that's clonopin. I'm guessing it's more in the shorter acting stuff, just judging by how loose you were and the S my D stuff and all that. That's it. That felt like Xanax to me. <laughs> uh-huh. that, that felt like it's one of those medicines because I knew you were on something. Uh, and so, you know, you notice how loose your body is like sort of, you know, all the muscles are relaxed as well. Yeah. 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 It, it's loose. And um, yeah, it's like, I kind of <laughs> am just, losing losing track of conversations right, i think right you know? yeah, yeah. there's memory problems with it as well Definitely. so you can't wor- so all kinds of memory gets fucked up you your working memory which is holding something in mind while you're doing something like a conversation and your laying down of memories so the ability tomorrow to remember today thankfully it's going to be very limited so this will be interesting oh when you watch this back oh boy um like alcohol does that kind of thing too mm. well so what have you learned uh so far um uh, i mean nothing i don't know <laughs> did it did it make you have a bowel movement because sometimes no. that'll sort of loosen up too no. and i don't mean like diarrhea loose but the whole, you you have to expand a little bit of muscular energy to uh keep that keep that uh what should we say that uh the storage bin uh, <laughs> accumulating waste. I, I think I've been exercising that muscle for so damn long. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, I, I get it. I don't, I don't even have to think about it. I get it just it. doesn't. So what? Doesn't. So given that you haven't learned anything, what what led to this experiment, uh, dude? It, it's uh, I mean, everything right now is like moving. You know, the, so the you're the stressed move. out. Oh God, I mean, oh. endlessly. Um, and so I just I woke up today with uh. Like I, I got home from work yesterday. I had a conversation the minute I got back about moving and the budget and moving because I'm moving like four people, not just myself. Was this with Mr. Segura? He was on you? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Of course not. Um, no. So, Tom, so good. Tom is so, amazing. Right. So this, this not the work environment. These guys no. are amazing. Okay. Yeah. No, no. So, I, lo- so let's count our count our blessings. So good. You got a great working work environment. You got great yeah. peers. Everything's good. Yeah. It's just the actuality of moving and all that is just getting getting to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just that uh the way that we yeah. I mean as you can imagine I don't uh you know. I'm not the most prepared when it comes to moving. So in the past, when we've moved, me and my roommates, uh, we do it last day. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we, yeah, yeah, we yeah. get a U-Haul no, no, no. last you're, minute. But you're grown up now. Thing. You're grown up now. You can't do that, right? Well, it's, I mean, you know, yeah. we were grown ups when we moved last time. The, the yeah, pro- but the now you're grown that, up, grown up. You were working for some Russian TV station back then. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> Russian TV station. <laughs> what was it? Was it Russian TV? No, it was, it was Russian live shows. But yeah, Russian, same thing, same well, thing. Way off. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and, Hold on, is that how you say fuck you, Drew? <laughs> it's, it's a bird. No, it's, 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 it's putting a comedic little button on something that really is actually funny. So, 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 cause I, cause I don't want to say fuck you. I want to say, this is funny guys. You're, you're saying you're way off and like, mm, was I? So that's funny. Um, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny. Cool guys, <laughs> really like. Yeah, this speaking show. of cool guys, we're we're, we're going there. Um, so, here's the thing about taking medicine when you're anxious. So, so you have every in, in the world we live in, lots of people would take medication feeling the way you felt. Okay, and and so for somebody to judge you for taking medicine, even though it was somebody else's prescription, that's a whole other matter. Let's just talk about taking medicines for anxiety. I do not recommend people take other people's prescriptions. Obviously not. But but medicines for anxiety, I'm also not a fan of. Um, but m- so many people do it in our country. We either drink, we smoke weed, or we take meds. And the the big problem is two, two big problems that I see, particularly with the medicines. Because the medicines can amplify the anxieties, particularly the short-acting ones like Xanax, can amplify the anxiety for the day or two following. So the next couple of days may feel like shit for you because of this, okay? So I'm not saying keep taking it because then eventually there's even a worse reckoning after that. You get it? Got you. Okay, so, so you may, if you have increased anxiety tomorrow, you can at least say to yourself, yeah, I did this. I got some relief yesterday, but today I have to pay a price for it. Okay. Got you. The other thing is it, it blocks our brain's ability to grow. 
when it comes to managing things. You know, to manage stuff in our life requires our brains to do, to act, engage, and do stuff, and to improvise, and to create, and to build cha- solutions, right? That is a really, really important thing that we have obfuscated in this country like crazy in the name of not feeling pain, not feeling anxiety, not you know feeling grief, whatever it might be. It's important to feel things. I'm not saying to the point that you can't function. I'm not saying the medicines don't have a, a role. Don't get me wrong. I have an anxiety disorder. I have taken stuff at the different times in my life. I get it. It gets to the point where you can't function. And if you can't function, okay, I get it. Uh, under doctor supervision, hopefully. Not <laughs> who was the person that gave you the meds, by the way. Uh, not, just, not to tell you a person, but I mean, who is he or she to you? Just a friend. Just, a, just like a, a friend. girlfriend, girl, like somebody you're hanging with, just, or just, a, just a friend, friend, <laughs> male or female. <laughs> Too many questions. I, I answered it already. Female, got it. <laughs> What's happening, man? What you, the I FBI? Huh? You know. the Fez? What's wrong, man? Okay. So, so, so it's a female friend. <laughs> trying to do to female cheat. friend, and we don't want her to think too much of whatever's going on between you. I get it. I get it. But, but I, I get it. I get it. You're moving. What are you gonna do? So, so here's Drew. Drew you're so fucking smart, Drew. You know that? <laughs> How you so that smart? I, I, I told you I can turn on my X-ray vision, and then I just I I'll, see it. I don't like it. Turn yeah, that shit okay. off, nigga. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> you fucking you the feds, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this summer, Bespoke Post is here to take your adventures to the next level with a new lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. And it costs you less because people are trying to get this stuff in your hands who so you use it and love it as I do so much of the summer gear, the outdoor barbecuing gear, stuff for a weekender bag. I love it. It's a perfect bag for essentials or for all carry-on luggage. I love that weekender bag. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered from travel and outdoor gear to breezy summer styles, grooming goods. Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, just take that quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. They're all great. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box only $45. It's all gear you want but wouldn't get for yourself and you certainly wouldn't get it all at once. They think of everything. They have over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Dr. Drew at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code Dr. Drew for 20% off your first box. But but this brings us to the, the other topic I wanted to get to, which is trust, which is really important for people to be able to trust. So do you just not trust the medical community or do you have trusting authority or try to trusting you know, anybody, where, where does trust, what's the, the boundaries of trust for you? I can't wait to get into this. Yeah, see, here's the thing though, man. Like you, you want to do this, it's going to be the rest of the show. <laughs> Trust is, we, is my, we can always come back to it. Trust me. Trust cause, me. Because trust is a, it's a big I mean, deal. I get it. It's everything. It's yeah. it's it's uh, yeah. 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 I don't trust. You're not anybody. alone. You are not. Listen, anybody. a lot of people are going to relate Every. to what you're saying here because trust. Here's the problem. I, I think I've expressed this before on this show, and I'm going to say it again now, which is that if you don't trust, you can't get close, right? And for each of us to develop our sense of self, a cohesive identity and our ability to regulate emotions, it requires closeness with other humans. Now, I'm guessing there are certain people you are close to, right? You can right. do that. You're not, it's not that you're incapable of it. Right. It's, if you've been badly traumatized, those people become incapable of closeness, incapable of that kind of being in that frame of closeness that allows for you know really tight exchange of feelings and the ability to develop regulation. I'm guessing this is more sort of to just you're not easy. It's not easy to get to that closeness for you. You don't trust people just generally. Not such a bad thing, by the way, because most people aren't worthy of your trust, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I I treat everybody the same. Where I mean, like you said, you know, I I don't I don't get close to many yeah. people. Yeah, but you uh, do. You're capable of it. That's I'm, my I'm guess. capable. Yeah, yeah. but See, yeah, I, I over trust. I'm I'm too trusting. Way too trusting, and, and that's my that's that's equally a problem. As as and these are all issues of boundaries. Boundaries being overly tight or overly porous, that kind of stuff. I wrote a book. I just wrote a book coming out with my daughter and I, I recommend you pre, pre-buy it. It's called It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward and it's about these issues. It's written for sort of moms and, and teen teen children. It's not your mom's house 
per se. I mean, those of you that are sending me these emails and things, I don't think this is your thing so much. But 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 if you have kids who are in the sort of teenage stuff, it, and it's funny, the it, it came up for me today. I didn't think I was going to talk about this. I'm surprised. Um, it's called It Doesn't Have to Be Awkward. Please, please support it. My daughter's a writer, and this is a big deal for her. It's her first big book. Is it an audio book as well? The audio book. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm finishing it on Friday. I'll download uh, it. Both she and I are doing it together. Um, but it, it came to mind for me today because of uh, uh, Governor Cuomo's trouble. Did you notice this? That he has now put out another video where it shows him kissing all these just men in the in the video and saying, oh, that's just how I express myself. And we make a big point in the book of saying that just because it's how you do it or it's your culture, other people may not consent to that. You have to really kind of, it's a more complicated thing than, hey man, this is just how I do it. And, you know, I rub your back, I reach under your blouse. It's just what I do, man. You know, where do you, <laughs> where do you stop? I just, I kiss men on the lips. I kiss men on the forehead. It's just what I do. Good. It's fine. But make sure they're, uh, we, my daughter, uh, you know, sort of had issue with how when a kid, I don't remember who the family member was that, you know, people go, go kiss your uncle, go kiss your niece, you know, whatever. She didn't, she didn't like that. We don't, we don't consent with our, you know, we had to think about who were cons- you know, the consent process and all this. I mean, it's, it's, you know, for young people, this is very confusing. So our book addresses that and, and uh, sort of hopefully clarifies it for people. But anyway, back to the trust. Do you, do you know? Um, sort of where that trust issue come from? Was there a sentinel event, much like there was a sentinel event for the toilet for you? Yes, I know exactly the moment. What happened? Your Honor. Yes, sir. It was uh, my father. Mm. My father. He, leaving? He, he, leave? Leaving, yeah. lying all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it okay, so so how happened. can you, right? How can you develop a close trusting <laughs> thing? Is it is most of that trust directed towards men or do you have the same for women as well? Uh, it's more, it's more, I'd say I, I'm more intimidated by what men could do, mm. but like, I think the trust is kind of the same. I just mm. don't have any fear or as much, I guess, fear. Well, like physically or psychologically? Both. Yeah. Yeah. G- given, given that that's your, your sort of posture, I, I must tell you it is a great honor to feel like you trust me. And, <laughs> and No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. No, I, I, I I, I feel like that's a big deal to you, and I will honor that trust as the best of my ability. I, I get that that's a that's difficult territory for you, um, and it must be hard on a show like this where we give you shit about stuff. It's like it's kind of a double. It's kind of a interesting problem for me, right? Isn't it fun? It is fun, but it makes it makes it a higher stakes game. I'll grant you that. But I, I, I hope, I trust that you will tell me if there's territory that you've been pretty good about that so far that you don't want to go. I, I will happily respect that. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. I, I think uh, I'm pretty down for anything. You I know, I know that, but like, I, we could easily violate your trust. You could easily this place. We we go everywhere here. <laughs> yeah. It, it gets you know this is about boundaries, and it becomes boundaryless very quickly here. So. Oh yeah, like yeah. if I had you know boundaries up, I mean those are yeah. gone now. <laughs> you know what I mean? We we've know, broken those walls down. Not it's all good, of them. It's good and bad. Yeah, it's good and bad. And, <laughs> and I would argue that you seem to have trust for Nadab too, and then Nadab, you ought to you ought to deal with that equally as respectfully. So, uh, be careful, my friends. Yep, uh, yeah. I will okay. handle it as delicately as I can. Okay, mm, not here. <laughs> I know that's not going to happen. I, I think more it's an issue of awareness and respect. I, I delicate. We, we passed delicate three years ago or whatever when I first got here. Um, okay, so so let me just one last question about trust, and but we, it's something we'll revisit again, no doubt. Um, but the medical profession, because it always troubles me when people can't trust physicians and. And uh, and I'm I'm deeply concerned about African Americans in this country generally because they've been mishandled by the medical community so many times that there's now some kind of a permanent mistrust and that's a problem. Now we're trying to deal with that by by obviously creating increasing diversity in the profession, which is goes without saying a good thing. But what else is going on for you as it pertains to my profession? Um, it's it doesn't. There's nothing specific to to your profession. It's just that my in my head. When you tell me something, you can tell me anything. Yeah, I am hearing the possible, like you know, the possible lie. I'm always hearing the potential lie that do, you're trying do to Do you tell check me. up? Do you do your own research? Uh, check up on. Let's like, say, let's say I said, uh, you know, streptococcal pneumonia is treated with penicillin at high dose. Mm. Would you go? Hmm. Let I mean, me look, let me look. Let me Google that. Check that out. If if you said that and were like, and therefore you should take it. Then I would think that well, there's probably a reason that you want me to take it. What reason could there be? Hmm. Ah, I bet it's interesting. something, something, something. And interesting. Like, I go on these 
crazy tangents. So it, it can't be that I just, and it's not, I know, I know you kind of trust me, so it's not necessarily applying to me, but right. a, a doctor per se, you would think he has some ulterior, some motive for doing this. I will tell you when doctors have, a, when doctors have a motive, it's mostly to do something and to move along. That's about the, that's as sinister as they ever get, I'd say. Right. right. You know, just because they're busy and they want to do something and they just kind of, right, we'll try this and I'll, I'll see you back in a week, see how it works. That, that's about as sinister as, as we get. And and you could argue that that's a problem, that we should be sitting and thinking and really being sure we want to apply that risk reward to that given individual. I would argue we always need to do that. But I know that my peers don't all the time. They just do stuff. Sort of, in, sort of they have, they're on automatic a lot of the time. And listen, man, we are getting to the time when you're not even going to see doctors anymore. You're going to see physician extenders. You're going to see nurse practitioners and, and uh, PAs and stuff. And they're very good. They're very good. I, I, and I, if that's that's the medical system we're creating now, and uh, that's what it's going to be. Wait, what does that mean? What's what's the difference? It, it means these are these people did not go to medical school. Some of them are nurses. Some of them are not. Uh, and the doctor sort of supervises them from afar. Like the doctor at the end of the day may see the medical record if there's a difficult case, may review it with the PA. That's it. But he, oh, the, wow. the, what you don't know is that most most medical problems are so routine. See, here's my feeling. Most medical problems are so routine that a PA or nurse practitioner can easily handle it. The reason P you want to... PA meaning physician? Physician assistant, assistant yeah. P PA or, or nurse practitioner, NPPA. Uh, but the reason you want a doctor's eyes on is because we've, been, we've seen everything. And so we're highly trained to pick up what's not routine. Like if there's some little thing that we go, oh, that, that is, mm -mm. It's not, that's not the pneumococcal pneumonia, that's, that's sarcoid, whatever. And, but presumably people, it, the reason it goes on without a lot of mess is that person who's not treated properly with the, the right treatment will come back. And that's when they start thinking about it more, more deeply. So again, you know, it'd be nicer if we did it on the first visit, but uh, doctors miss it plenty of times too. So I actually had a, a, a follow-up question. Go here. ahead. Um, so, you know, you're talking to Annie about, you know, these uh, uh, anxiety medications. Yes. And I remember hearing the other day that someone, I can't remember if I saw it in a YouTube clip or something, but that benzos are the hardest addiction, one of the hardest yes. addictions to get over. Like, why, very is, hard. why is that? Like, um, what's the withdrawal process like? The withdrawal is horrible. The, look, he's taken one day of a little bit higher dose than he should have, and I've already told him he's going to have withdrawal tomorrow, right? If it if it's Xanax, Ativan, that that category of medicine, oh, damn. the withdrawal kicks in very quickly. If he were on it for two weeks, is it like a, a heroin withdrawal where you're just like, uh, like no, super sluggish? Or? No, 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 no. Heroin withdrawal is like a, the worst flu you ever had in your life with horrible back pain and desperation. Benzodiazepine withdrawal is agitation, irritability, desperation, and then seizure. <laughs> you climb the walls oh, in a benzo withdrawal. I mean, it is. You can even become. You can even develop something called a withdrawal or tardive akathisia, where you can't stop moving. It's one of the most uncomfortable things you can go through. Now, I have I managed that for years. There's lots of good treatment for it. You need to be around. You need to be treated by somebody who's done it a lot because you have to use a ton of meds to suppress it. Particularly, you've been on the benzodiazepine for years. The horrible thing is that if it's clonopin, a lot of the misery goes on for one year. So you what? have to pr plan for that. It's not, the first two weeks are horrible, and sometimes the first four weeks are horrible, but with the longer acting meds like clonazepam, the post-acute withdrawal goes for on for a year, so it takes a year to normalize. To get back to your to baseline? To get back to your baseline. Jesus. So when people have finished that first year, they always look back and go, oh man, I was not normal at all. What about so sleep disturbances, excess anxiety, irritability, all kinds of crazy physical symptoms. Is, it's not good. Is Xanax similar? Xanax is, un, for whatever reason, well, Xanax is a much, much more short-acting medicine with a higher affinity at the uh, GABA site, the receptor site, the benzo receptor site, and therefore the withdrawal is much more intense and shorter. Hmm. Yeah, but that too, much they can less than a year. That one can drag on a bit, but not like clonopin. Clonopin really drags on. Um, so again, I mean, Neurontin should be your core medication. That's another GABAergic medicine. It works very, very well. I use a lot of phenobarbital. If you want to talk to your doctor about that, to help people off. Um, you won't like that medicine, but it helps curve the withdrawal. So anyway, yeah, I've seen a million, million times. And and it used to be, um, I remember Upjohn, who created Xanax, used to come into my office and tell me, no, 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 no. These are just your patients. They were just like this to begin with. It's not our medicine. It's the this this is where I got this is where I jumped the shark with pharmaceutical agent companies. It's 1987, and they came in my office and said, "Oh no, that patient that just had the seizure, he's just anxious. Just anxious. he was like that before he put on. It's not our medicines." I'm like, 
Get the fuck out of here. I don't, don't ever tell me that again. You insult me. This is clearly a withdrawal syndrome. Tell me when you got information on the withdrawal. It took them another three or four years to come clean about what, what was going on there. Jeez. So that, that I was really pissed at the drug companies for that. So. Yeah, pharmaceutical I'm, lobbyists really just kind of get in there and try and uh, push No, not pills. lobbyists. They're salesmen. They're salesmen. They come in. And, see, see we, there used to be a cozy relationship between the drug companies and the physicians. It was thought to be sort of collaborative. They would fund my academic speakers. And then they would you know, say, you know, today's speakers brought you by Upjohn. That, that was the extent of their, their commercial. They would just, you know, we were, it was collaborative. We'd bring in guys like Fauci and he'd give a talk. And, you know, and these guys would pay for his travel and bring him in. And um, that got weird. That got weird over the years. And so, you know, now it's a, not such a, it's a it, now it's a, a relationship that should not even be had. Let's put it that way. We should not be in relationship with these big pharmaceutical companies. Wow. That's why. Um, all right. Let's talk about gargoyling. Hell yeah. And gargoyling because of it. Yes. Dozens of emails coming in from people that Brown using Ennis technique, this according to Zolo. So I'm going to read you two. Who knew that this was going on in America? And God knows maybe worldwide. All right, here You're we go. You're saying due to the movie It, like specifically? Also? The title of this email also gargoyling because of quote it wow yes hi mommy just writing you to let you know that i used to gargoyle dump like any for the exact same reason it in in capital letters no way that movie scared the crap out of me as a kid or into him in this case and caused me to climb atop the porcelain throne for a number of years he did get over it though and he'd be fair I eventually grew out of it, uh, but dumped like any at home at my friends' houses and in public restrooms. Just writing you to let you know, uh, at least we know three now <laughs> that have done it this way. This time we beat me, Keith from Oregon. So there you go, Eddie. I thought you were the only one. I thought you were unique. You're certainly unique. You're, you're one of a very few. Let's put it that way. I can't believe it. Wow. Here's one. Oh, did you really think you were the only one? It's never, it's never that way with human beings. There's well, like no such thing as the only one of anything. It not, just doesn't exist. Not that does like, you know, that purchase, but the only one that is because of that movie. That's such a specific thing. It is such movie, a specific you know thing. I mean? But yeah, but I you got to figure if somebody had that effect on the movie, there's got to be another. It's got right, to be. Right, right. Too many so. people in the world. Here's, I used to poop like any. Hi, mommy and booth mommies. Booth mommies. I like that. Uh, after you know, any poops like a gargoyle, I immediately felt validated. When I was eight to 10 years old, incredibly short, I was incredibly short for my age. All toilets were too tall. I could not completely wipe clean after making brown. Had to resort to using Southern style squatty potty. Hmm. I guess that's sitting on the toilet edge. I've since stopped. I'm grown now, but some toilets still give me trouble. I think about using the technique sometimes. We, have we been calling this Southern style squatty potty? Is that us or is that we his thing? We have not. No. We have not. It was necessary for me at a time, but any, you are never alone. Keep those jeans high and tight like the Browns dropping into the toilet and you bet I'm coming up in May to show you where it spits. <laughs> R. Lee. Good times. Um, sudden significant decrease in ejaculate. This is another good one. Uh, 26 year old over the past three months or so, I've noticed that my ejaculate has decreased by around 75%. believe it's due to my extreme dieting measures, but I put myself on for over five months. From January to June, I consistently ate about 850 to 1,000 calories per day. Exercising, the first two months were keto, and then I switched to very low fat, uh, consuming blah, blah, blah. Uh, however, my sex drive became nearly non-existent. I would get the urge to masturbate once every 10 days. Over the last Jesus. month, I've regulated my diet. My sex diet has returned. How long should I anticipate it will take for my body to fully recover? Jacket's still alarmingly low. Um, so get some uh, zinc in there, right? Uh, interesting. Uh, that's a great idea. That we might want to do that. But here's the bottom line: so when you're st when we are designed biologically, that when we go into starvation, the first thing that goes is reproduction, right? You don't want to bring a baby into a world where there's no food resources. That's what your body thinks. Like you don't want to try to have a, a pregnant woman survive a pregnancy. If she can't get calories, that will not work. You also don't want to try to raise a baby. So your body immediately goes down to zip. So if you're on extreme calorie restriction, first thing that will happen is your ejaculate will go down. Your ejaculate has something to do with your testosterone level. It's not exact correlation, but it has something to do with that. Your ejaculate will go down. Your drive will go down. Your frequency of ejaculation will go down. Uh, and then when it comes back, uh, hard to say. Sex drive usually comes back very quickly, but as you found out, the ejaculate may not. Um, let's see. Uh, it doesn't say how long he's been. Two months. No, it doesn't say how long he's been eating. Uh, last month. Uh, I would uh, I would think it would come back. And I would think also, believe it or not, you'd have to masturbate a fair bit to get it back. Like you'd have to kind of 
get your get the plumbing going again. Then, then get the get, get the. Some. Like, there's a funny curve to your testosterone levels. If you're not if you're not ejaculating at all, it's low. If you ejaculate too much, it's low. There's sort of an optimal zone where you're just ejaculating enough. Hmm. So would you recommend that he uh, starts uh, penciling in some two a days? It depend. You don't want to overdo it. It depends on his rhythm. You know what I mean. I'm for any yes for sure. Two a day for sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. Three. three, three, three no, three, I mean three. I I don't want to overdo it to begin with. I'm not saying now. Now you're oh. three days your normal your normal pace. Oh, I understand. Copy that. Copy that. Copy that. Hey Hitler, I'm 44 year old male. A few months ago, I had what the doctor thought was UTI, a lower abdomen, dick pain, peeing issues. Given an antibiotic, I called back after about a month. Started having lower abdominal pain again. When my left ball started to ache, I phoned back. I was told to do a home. STI kit came back, except uh, the blood, which had hemolyzed. The balls ache, came back. After a continuous ball ache of six hours, I phoned the doctor. They sent me to the emergency room. After exam, ultrasound, and blood test, I was told I had no torsion or swelling or infection. I'm waiting on my liver and kidney test. Hmm. The other thing that may not be related to this is during a lockdown, I had a few marathon wakes. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted a long time. I won't say how long. Let's just say it was pretty cool. Uh, this caused some dick swelling, so I laid off. Everything turned into uh, normal dick-wise. Uh, it's only my left ball, but I've noticed a few twangs in my right also. Yeah, you could have really irritated your prostate, essentially, um, quite a bit. So this might be a prost prostatitis, which can also call, or, and or an epididymitis. You know, I'm not telling you what to do, but talk to your doctor about anti-inflammatories, like a Motrin type thing. Let's get a voice message in here. Let's get down to the basics here of, of uh, After Dark. Absolutely. Yeah. True. Hi, Dr. Drew. I am a 37-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. I have a three-year-old child, and my issue is uh, with the nether regions. I mm -hmm. um, have noticed about two months ago uh, kind of a dark, splotchy uh, pattern around my <laughs> Uh, vaginal area, kind of the, in the crease of my uh, leg, um, verging onto the, the the vagina area, and I'm wondering what this is. I do have melasma on my forehead, and I'm wondering, is this an extension of that? Do I have just like melasma on my vagina? I don't know. I'm wondering what your thoughts are. Thanks a lot. Bye. That is a first for uh, for your mom's house. I love that question. I will get to it in a second. Isn't it interesting how <laughs> when women talk about their vagina, they talk to it, they talk about it as though it's something sitting on the couch on the other side of the room. And when men talk about their penis, they talk about it like it's something right here, right now, right in their hand. You know what I mean? Have you noticed that? Yeah, like this is a fire I need to put out right but, now. But it's but it's it, it's the, it's women are talking about something that's like sort of away from themselves, and men are talking about something that is immediate and part of. It's kind of weird. I've I've noticed that. I don't know what that oh, is. Like they consider the vagina as a different part of them. It, it's like they're talking about a, a piece of furniture over there, <laughs> right? And, and we're talking about clearly something that's. Ours. I feel like <laughs> it's, the, us. it's the difference in shame, right? We don't have any shame. We is it love, shame? Because we love talking about our dick. Like but, girls are like my women vagina. these days should not be feeling shame, right? I mean, that's kind I, of they weird. shouldn't. But I think that's like where I think it. I think they were raised to at least in our generation. Like it was I more think of a there's actually thing. something about having genitalia that go in oh. that makes it more mysterious, and you get used to thinking about it as something other hmm. because it's you can't see it, and men are it's all there for men, and there's like no doubt about what they're talking about, and so it just it's just a different kind of relationship thought process. So uh, you're looking at melasma up there. Uh, melasma is essentially uh, just p pigment on the face from hormones. People get it during pregnancy. They call it the mask of pregnancy, in fact. And they get it from hormones, whatnot, birth oh, control pills. Tied to pregnancy? It can be. It can be. That's why she was saying she's a three year old and she had melasma, probably from the pregnancy. Oh, I think so that her, was what she was implying. So she's saying that her vagina looks like this lady's cheeks? Um, why don't you just look up uh, vulva pigmentation? Vulva pigmentation. She's talking about pigmentation of her vulva, which is not really melasma to my understanding. Uh, let's see. Uh, pigmentation. Yes, this should be interesting. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> so that's what she's talking about. Uh, some of these are, th a lot of those are melanomas. Uh, so that's only the important thing. There's some, uh, well, uh, this is all actually dermatopathology. This is this is actually problems that need to be taken off. That's all, these are all, that's all melanoma. Yeah, these are much so, darker so spots. You don't want to see the... that. Yeah, that that's oh, not good. 
Um, so the bottom line is it's usually benign. It's usually nothing. And you notice how when we go to look at pictures of it, they only show you things that are serious and that's just the melanoma stuff. Um, if you are, I'm guessing you're a darker skin person. And so darker skin people tend to pigment when things get irritated and, uh, can't imagine anything more irritating to a vagina than, uh, pushing a baby through the canal. Right. And so you tears and rips and all that stuff when it repairs and it, it repairs this some pigment there. That's all. So irritation, no big deal. Uh, nothing really to worry about. And, uh, good question though. Let's get another one. Hey Hitler. So hey. it's a rule in my house that the lid is closed when one would flush the toilet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it brings up a question when the lady asked if the bacteria can get into your behind mm -hmm. when you flush, if that were a concern, wouldn't it also be a concern for like farting in your panties? Would that be more likely to cause an infection? Uh, I brought it up to my friend, and she told me that's why we change our underwear every day. I don't know if that's true or not, but definitely concerning. Should I change my panties after I fart? I'm coming up in May. Thank you. Bye, Mommy. Yeah, thank you, Mommy. Really good question. I, I feel like my relationship with this audience is maturing. Not, not that the questions are more mature. Yeah, but what part but, of this is mature? But, but, they're, but they're progressing. Let's say maybe it's progressing. That's a better word. She actually makes a really interesting point. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Okay. I've heard the, the vagina <laughs> is designed to withstand a lot, let's just say. Um, and it's true that the E. coli from the colon can find its way from the anus to the V, the A to V, or behind, as she said it. Um, and so it's, it's something, a concern for things like wiping, and it's some women, it just happens automatically and they get recurrent vaginal infections. And that probably has nothing to do with the cotton underwear. Um, but the toilet is not a major source of anything. You can imagine all the stuff we would see if that were indeed the case. It's just not. So relax. It's all good. Now, that that vine, vine is good. Well, you've heard me say this before, that ED treatment should be easy. It should be confidential. There's no reason not to use the efficiency of online. With Roman, you get free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. No uncomfortable waiting rooms, no awkward conversations. They know why you're there. They take care of business. They're happy to help. Roman ready equals confidence. The confidence you know you can rise the occasion in a moment. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships you free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. It's all online. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Dr. Drew and complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Dr. Drew. If you're prescribed, get 50% off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Roman ready. Now, hold on. Uh-oh. Because I have heard uh, situations from ladies where they say that they fart while they, while they sit down and the fart bubble travels through their gooch and then ah. into the vag. Is that a little bit more dangerous? It, it, it's, again, part of the, the, the uh, brown highway, so to speak, the, 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 the E. coli highway of getting from A to V. And uh, I'm certain if it's a... If, the th uh, we have to think these things all the way through. I love if it. If it's too. a wet fart, I'm certain it's more likely to carry stuff with it than if it's not. And if it were wet, I would urge you to... to clean things up. And by the way, I think this country is coming to uh, the great, the, the realization that bidets are not such a bad idea after all. And Hell you know, yeah, dude. Yeah, I think I think bidet is one way to manage some of that stuff. So bidet all day. Bidet, and now we have the, don't you have something you put, installed on your toilet? Didn't you do that? Yeah, the the washlet. What's it called? It's a washlet. I believe my brand is called the Astor. The Astor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> one word. A S S T O R A S T O R. Come on. And, and what does that stand for? Uh, it tears your ass up. Well, I mean, it douches your ass up. I okay. mean, that's how I use it. Okay, good. Well, good for you. Is that you. bad? No, no. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Uh -oh. I have to thank you. Uh oh. Yes. I started incorporating psyllium husk uh, capsules ah. into my diet, mm -hmm. and holy shit, it's boy, a, are my browns seeming more. It, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? Huge difference. Yeah. If if you are not, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but but part of some people's um, supplement needs are prebiotics and pre, you know and 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 bulk. You gotta you gotta have. You can't get enough bulk by eating lettuce and, and everything. You can try, 
But some of us really need a lot of bulk. And psyllium husk is a perfect way to do that. I use it, I use it every day. I've used it for a while. And it was very useful. Very, yeah. very useful. And that, not everybody. Some, some people, acacia gum, that's another thing you can do. There's a lot of good stuff out there. And I, I actually was thinking about developing a product. I finally just gave up on it. But just get the psyllium husk. Get the least expensive you can get. And just use it. A lot of it. Uh, okay. Uh, one more voicemail. What's up there, Chomos? It's uh, JJ. I'm a 23-year-old from uh, Alabama. I currently work as a CNA at a long-term care facility working 7P to 7A, and when I'm not doing that, I'm going to school to become a nurse. Oh, boy. And so my sleep schedule is very fucked up. Yes. But whenever I do get off of work and go to bed, I always have these very detailed, vivid dreams yes. where I can't talk and my mouth cannot open like right. in the dreams i physically try to pry my mouth right. open and right. i cannot right i don't have any sleep issues like there's nothing it's no detriment i just wake up and i'm just like what the hell was that yeah so could this be something from like sleep apnea i have no, no clue what no, it no. is i'm just curious on your opinion it, uh you dr drew and of course dr nadav his input as well of course um you guys Keep feathering it Thank and you, we will. just be good so I don't have to come up there and put the baby raper stamp on you. Yeah, Love JJ. you guys. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. JJ from Atlanta. So, uh, Alabama. Uh, so, uh, that is a sleep disorder, right? A sleep disturbance. And it's caused by your abnormal sleep cycling. And I've talked about this before, um, which is sort of sleep terrors, right? These sleep terrors where you uh, can wake up and not be able to move. So, there's a period of sleep that is associated with paralysis. And if your paralysis and your sleep cycles aren't sort of timed up, you can kind of wake up. You can believe you're fully awake, even though you're actually still asleep and not be able to move. And when people get into that state, they often will have hypnagogic hallucinations along with it, like they will believe that something's lying on top of them. People have all these elaborate things. All those, all those uh, alien abductions you've read about are all hypnagogic hallucinations. Usually it's somebody's having sex with them, somebody's holding them, somebody's holding them down. It's the devil, it's an angel, it's God knows what. You're asleep. It's all kinds of weird shit gets into your head. Um, this is another version of that. Uh, it is sort of different in that you're not awake, you're actually asleep, but you're not all the way asleep, but you're still in the paralysis stage of sleep. And so you're kind of aware that you're paralyzed and you're kind of aware, you're kind of not awake, but you're more awake than you imagine, I'd say. And uh, yeah, if you restore your sleep back to normal, you try to get more sleep, proper sleep, your, sli your cycling will reestablish. But man, you must go into some very, very deep sleep very fast and that that's not normal. So it's going to be hard for you, man. You can get sick. There's a lot of data about what is called sleep work cycling uh, abnormalities. People get heart disease and lung diseases and all kinds of stuff if they do this for too long. And when you're young, you can kind of handle it, but be careful, be careful, be careful. Let's man, that's a good answer, Dr. Drew. I was going to go in a completely different direction. Where were you going, Dr. Nadav? You wanted your input. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to say try emptying your nuts out before you go to sleep. That might give you a little bit more of a restful no, that's not the deal. I, I, no. I'm not a, averse to that. Usually he, works for me. He go, Good. He goes too deep too fast and then can't kind of get out, gets normally out of it. He's probably, he's probably in REM sleep when that's all happening. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about sleep, sleep physiology and hygiene to really give him a specific uh, state of sleep analysis, but there are people who can do that. Perhaps you should go uh, enlist in a sleep study, try and figure out, let a professional look, tell him what's yeah, wrong well with the you, sleep. Yeah, but we, why? Because what, 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 what's that professional going to do except, dude, you can't work overnight, and he's going to keep working overnight. Uh, he's got to restore, at some point, he's got to put an end to this abnormal sleep pattern and start to sleep normally so he can restore normal sleep. Now, as a medical student, that like he'll be able to return to a normal sleep pattern in what, like four years? Well, he's he's a nursing student, but right. but but it's funny you bring that up because I was thinking recently. I guess we've talked about this before on the show, and I was thinking about friends of mine. Well, I was thinking about the difference between how we train physicians now and how we train them when I was in training, where we were chronically, severely sleep dis dis deprived, and I just learned to live like that for a couple of decades. But my peers, I remember fourth year medical school, a friend of mine was telling me that it was so bad she had an active waking hallucination. Like she started really hallucinating um, while she was had responsibilities, you know, as a, as a student. Jesus. And uh, she had to kind of attend to her sleep a little bit because it can get wild. You know, you your body has to, we have to sleep. Not everybody. Some people genetically only need four hours a night, but most people need on the order of seven or eight. And if you're one of those and you're getting four or, or three or two, you'll eventually have a, 
what happens is you, your body starts reming while you're awake. And that gives you these hypnagogic hallucinations. Right. Yeah, so. it's it's uh wh- whatever like sleep you don't give to your body, your body will just take whenever it can. That's right? exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, um Okay. Can't pee went high. My name is Jordan, I'm twenty nine, pot smoker. I love one bowl a night. Uh, I noticed years ago when I get baked, it's rather difficult for me to take a pish, as Christina would say. It's kind of like trying to pee with a boner, uh, dual, but takes a little bit to get going. So my question is, should I get a finger up the butt and have things checked out? No, you're 29, dude. Or is the weed making my prostate swell or something? No. The weed is making, uh, much love and don't forget to live life 365. Uh, Can't pee high, dude. Uh, This is the relaxation of the bladder neck and it's the smooth muscle, the smooth muscle, muscle around the bladder that you're having trouble initiating. It's an autonomic phenomenon why you're having trouble uh, flipping from holding, which is something we have to learn to do as children, right? To hold the bladder, to relax the bladder. You're having trouble with the relaxation phase. I don't know why the pot's doing that to you, but it is uh, not good for your bladder. Um, Maybe a hot shower. And sometimes people, when they go from hot to cold water and then hot again, they sometimes are able to relax and evacuate that way. You might try that maybe before before going to sleep. I'm, I'm curious about John Brake's bad news. What is that? Oh yeah. Uh. So, yeah, this is. I like a, the way you're like. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I'm not sure if you're gonna like them or if you're gonna hate them. Uh oh. Um. So this is a service that a guy offers, and tell me what you think. Okay. Is this one of our cool dudes? Must be. Hi, is this Chase? Uh oh. Hi, I'm John. Uh, I run a service where I break bad news to people for other people. Okay. And uh. Your girlfriend, Brianna, hired me to break some bad news to you. She's been cheating on you. All right. Yeah, and she wants it to be over now. Wow. Okay. So, uh, yeah, sorry. You know who she's cheating on me with? What? Uh, some guy named Mike. Wow. All right, well... Really sorry to be the one to break this bad news to you, bud. Any more information? No. Uh, I'm just here to break the bad news. He seems okay. delighted by it. Wow. You have a good one, man. Well, he's good at it. I'll give him that. He, you- he does it in a very direct and, and sort of... Mm, I, I, because he doesn't care. He sort of look at that smirk. He's delighted right. by it in a weird way. That I don't like. Right. So what but does that give you a hint to about that? He guy? likes other people suffering. It, Glee and other people suffering is not a good human quality. I got news for is you. Is that psychopath? We'll have him take the psychopath test, and I think he would score <laughs> rather high. But but I I'm intrigued by the idea of John. I, I'm not sure it's a bad idea. I'm not sure. It's a bad idea to film other people suffering. I don't get that impulse. And where did he put that up? Just on YouTube or something? Yeah, I think it's on Is YouTube. that an advertisement for his services? Uh, no, I think it's just a channel where he uploads the footage. To Has he got a lot of that stuff up there? Uh, you know, he's got more than one video. He, oh, my he, goodness. He's done this a number of times. And, and is it all the cheating videos? Uh, it's just bad news. I mean, it's uh, it, it's been a while since I've been on the page, but it's uh, you know, it's kind of in that lane of, you know, people in relationships breaking bad news. Okay, it's, it's, it's not. Like it's this. not. Uh, you know, sort of notifications of demise of. You know, right. It's not like, hey, your done. dad's dead. I feel yeah. like there's a better way to probably mm, yeah. use that. Other well, than what, what I'm what I'm thinking is, how much worse is John than a text? You know what I mean? People do it by text all the time, and I've always thought that was horrible. In in a weird way, John is not worse, and it might be a little better. Hold on. I I think texting is horrible. You think? getting a text is worse than having john call you i do i do Hmm. yeah i do i think because i've always felt that texting a breakup a breakup you know giving it's so cowardly however hiring john isn't hiring john is at least creative (laughs) at least you give a human on the other end i mean think about how that guy was able to go you got anything else for me (laughs) you gotta fill me in what more as opposed to a text you're like "Ah, what you know, at least you have John there to go, yeah, man, is she hired me? Can you believe it? And just commiserate with you and to sort of go, yeah, this is bad. I, I, but I, it's my business to, to give bad news. I, but, you know, the fact that he likes giving the bad news is what's troublesome, but maybe that makes him good at it. I would say, I'd say that it's, it's better if uh, they offer you any type of like consoling of, of any kind. Yes. 
than, yes. than sure. But I mean, the way he did it, no, because he was just like, "Yep, that's all I was here well, for." Well, Sorry, but chief. he's got it. He's got. Sucks. <laughs> I agree with you. He's got to give it in a firm way. But he was able to say, oh, "Yeah, I wish I had more info." He was. If he were not, let's put it this way: if he weren't uh, looking smirking and gleeful while he was saying it, I would have thought he actually was like, "You know, I wish I had more information for you, but I don't." The fact that he thought it was funny was like, all right, dude, that's not okay. But right, anyway, right. so I'm just, the point is, the point I'm making is if you're going to break up with somebody, have the balls. There's too much cowardice right now. There's too much cowardice. Every time, every time, here, my new policy is when when some peer of mine starts giving me shit on Twitter, I'm calling them. I'm, I've told you this. I'm calling them up and I'm let's, let's talk about it because it's unlikely we disagree on things. All my peers all agree on stuff. And so if, if you think, if you believe the fake news that circulates on social media, that's on you, but let's talk about it. I'll, I'll be I'll be collegially about it. But I will tell you what it's uneffing canny how few people get to the phone. They will they magically. I've gotten email exchanges with people. They still won't get on the phone. They still won't get on the phone. They're cowards. They're that's disgusting to me. You're cowards. Hmm. We, this should be this should be collegial. You should at least have the 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 ability to get up and talk to your peers. Even if even if you disagree, I doubt we're going to disagree. But if let's say we do, let's let's talk about it. That's what we do as co colleagues. Now let me paint a scenario for you. All right. Let's say all of a sudden you get a call from John. John, yeah. John, he goes, "Hey, uh, I, Dr. I would Drew, I got I, some. Uh, I would bad hang news up for immediately. <laughs> your buddy, your buddy Frank disagrees with you. <laughs> I don't know about benzos or something. I don't know. Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah. Oh, I would like that. Right, but then, but then you have like, oh, what does he disagree on? And he goes, "Sorry, man, that's all the news I got." He just well, then, then I would be like, please send word back to <laughs> Sam or John or whoever he is. And say, I would love to get on the phone to discuss. I don't think we disagree. Or, See, or but he's to pass, gonna be like, to pass that, it's yeah. gonna be fifty bucks. Chief. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna charge you for that. Oh <laughs> man, you are so right. Yeah. Uh, and also, isn't there like a level of shame? The fact that there's like a stranger that's delivering this very personal bad. Like, if if John called me, is like. Hey man, your girl's cheating on you. I'd be like, John, who the fuck are you, and why do you know this? About I would my life? guess. Yes, I would have said that too. But but I would guess that the recipient of said news has not been a great boyfriend, I'm guessing. Or the girlfriend is a horrible person and you should be relieved to get rid of her. You know what I'm saying? I mean, anybody that's choosing to use John, I assume has some decent, either is a horrible psychopath themselves or has some decent motivation to not like that boyfriend and want to just get out. No, it's still oh, cowardly. It's I cowardly see. as can you're, be. You're, I see. You're, you're saying that that she's afraid there would be so much conflict that he maybe he's abusive or, or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, I mean, something really horrible, and Could she's be. just being horrible herself. And this Could is be. a way to be horrible. And and a text would be just as horrible, I imagine. But I get you know if somebody's abusive or problematic or stalking or something, a text could lead to other stuff. You know what I mean? It's kind of interesting. It's all very interesting. I, I don't sign off on it. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying people do bad stuff, and this is just another variation on that theme. And I'm not sure it's worse than texting, which a lot of people do. I think when we they should just. Up. I think we should just keep it old school and just ghost. You know, just say nothing. You, you know, in you a, know? <laughs> <laughs> in a weird way that I don't. Uh, you I'm know, totally what? kidding. That's you know what? Everybody's gonna cool. have their own. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ghost. <laughs> everyone's gonna have their own feelings about that. Some people may be relieved by ghosting. You know, some partners may be relieved by ghosting. Others, it's generally, it's 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 all all. People need information in order to let go of stuff. They need to know that you're you you didn't just die in a freeway accident. You you wanted to be out. Yeah, the the communication is key. The more oh communication, goodness. the better. Uh, I want to see a horrible, a hilarious face I was, plant. I was thinking the exact same thing, Drew. All right, let's do it. Oh! <laughs> oh! He's fine. I, if if that had been cement, he would not be fine. So the good news is it, you see the dirt come up there. So there's some padding there. Let's see one more time. <coughs> I'm going to be like Tom. Oh. Oh, yeah, he also, bounced. He, also bounced. he bounced, but I think his shoulders were forward a little bit. If, if, if I were Tom Segura, I'd be laughing out loud right now. Hold on one more time. Oh. oh, yeah. His shoulders did get loose. Yeah, and he had an arm in front of him a little bit. But uh, good for him. Well done. Uh, what was he trying to do? Is my question. Was that supposed to be land on his feet? I mean, one, one more I think, time. Let's I think see whatever what... he planned to do did not happen. <laughs> Let's see how far he got. One flip. Did he pass his feet? Yeah, he passed. His feet. He passed the feet. Maybe he was planning to do another half flip or something. It, I laughed. You see that? I laughed at it. 
Okay, so that I mean that one is like you know yeah. funny on the surface. Yeah. It's very hard to find that one horrible. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know because it's like he's getting up immediately. You're, you're, you're warming me up for something. I what, sure what's am. What's going on? Tell me if this is horrible oh, or hilarious. Oh, shit. To you. Yeah, but she, she didn't pass out from the pain or anything. She's probably fine. For the moment, when she gets a compartment <laughs> syndrome in that leg and her kidneys fail, that's not going to be so fun. Compartment syndrome. What is that? <laughs> it's where the she she when you get something a crush like that and you get an extreme break, you can much like Bert was concerned about giving Tom a baby arm, you can <laughs> you can affect the neuro neurovascular bundle. It's called, and you can sort of tear our arteries or veins and. Some of the some of the muscle groups in the leg are in compartments. They're in these tight compartments, and it fills with blood, and that further restricts the blood into that region, and uh, the muscle dies, and the muscle goes out into the bloodstream and clogs the kidneys. It's a mess. Compartment syndrome. It's a mess. 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 Sounds like a real mess. It's good times, and your <laughs> phosphates go. Everything goes out of whack. It's just a mess, and so it, so when so this reminds me of that horror show you guys showed me now multiple times. Of that uh, car, that uh, mechanic shop where you drive in and killed that guy. Oh, in Taiwan, <laughs> or I thought yeah. killed him. No, no, no. He's fine. He's alive. So I Classic. hear. But that was the same kind of thing I thought I was seeing, which is, you know, these compartment syndromes and these, and these, or unglovings. Like literally, sometimes when you compress a leg like that, the skin, it just pops off. It just splits all the way down. Wait a minute. Have you seen the lathe one yet? The what? The lathe one. Where the guy gets. I think I did. I'm pretty sure we showed it. The yeah. one with, with, the, with the blood mist. Oh my God! Where where he gets like caught in the machine and he starts twirling. He gets sucked into it. I don't think I saw that one. No, yeah, because I think it. that's where we got the word degloving from. Okay. But you know, if you want, I'll I'll pull it up right now if you want. I guess I, I think you should it because part I mean, part you, of the show lately has been me revisiting the things to see how I feel now as compared to before. Oh my God! You get it. Oh my God! You have it. Just it just Google's right up. And just a heads up, the viewers will not see this. Okay. Good. Yeah, because this is not something you're allowed to show on YouTube. It's wait, or pretty you, much anywhere. How, how are you able to see it? Uh, on Reddit. Oh my God, this is sad. <laughs> sure is. Did Tom laugh? Tom sent this to me. Or was he able to? Know that this was bad. I don't think I've seen this. There's a guy walking don't worry, around. Don't worry, it's, it's quick. Volta a ma machine guys walking you around. Do you want? A machine uh, tool sort of thing, and he gets. Dragged in. Oh, yeah. oh, my oh my goodness! He's just—that is not even ungloving. That is uh, pulverization. That's called pulverization. I've never seen that. You never showed this to you? No, that's all parts of bodies being thrown okay. off. No, yeah, that's his hand that just flew out. He, I think that might have been his head, guys. Uh, I like, I like that. I like that his coworker. Like, oh my God, oi vey! <laughs> he's like, he's like, oi, oi, the, the yeah. mess. <laughs> I like how you're projecting just Jewish mannerisms. Yo, now oh, he I cannot believe now Brian he's realized got what's happened. In. Now he, now he sees it. Now he. Before he's just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now he's like, oh, Jesus, that's terrible. That's, right, I've so never that's, seen that. So that's, that's not a degloving. All right. That's uh, that is know. a pulverization. That is terrible. That's a new word. I didn't know that that was a possibility. It is possible to pulverize the human body. Man, much like what a neat concrete. world we live in. I think we got to wrap this thing right here. <laughs> Are you guys okay with that? Can we wrap it? It's a perfect note to end <laughs> yeah, on. Okay, I think wrap. so. We, 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 as uh, Stern always says, we've said it all. <laughs> You've said it all. We've covered a lot of territory today. We Can we, can we? Just do a little, uh, like a Fed smoker palate cleanser. You know what I mean? I feel like little old-fashioned Fed smoker mm. pulling out teeth, feathering it, something to make us feel a little better. I'll tell you. Taking on some cops. You know what? Here, I'll. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll give you some TikToks instead. Okay, okay. Just something kind of. Uh, I love it when women wear those yoga pants. Eesh. Okay. Pretty great, right? That's a you'll get a lot of dates, sir. It's awesome. Yep. Another one? Sure do. Yep. Showing us pansies. Okay, oh. I think I need to teach a little peace hook in here. What? What peace hooking is is it's a bunch of exercises put together. 
We do lots of isometrics, resistance training, pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling all the time, pushing and pulling with your arms and your legs and push, push. Lots of stretching, lots of stretching the back. Let's do the back. This is like the yoga for America. A lot of massaging, massaging, massaging. <laughs> massage your stomach there, massage your stomach. I want to look like that guy. Lots of exercises. Is something bad going to happen? Push, push, push. What does that help? It's something nothing. Pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, gonna, pushing and pulling. If you're, if you're, no, you're 90, your if you're 90, this might do a little stretching something. And stretching, little stretch, stretch, yeah. stretch, 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 yeah. feel that stretch. But it's if you're uh, under exercise. age 85, uh, I don't think that does much. But congratulations, sir. Well done. Very enthusiastic. One more. I can't, I can't, I can't get the lathe out of my system yet. We got to get it out. One more. So I'm Jewish, but I'm what's called New York Jewish, which means Jewish, but for business purposes only. So for me, like I do things like I eat bacon, um, love foreskin. Um. <laughs> this lady sucks and a liar. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. That's fine. We can finish with that. Uh, the, uh, the business Jew did it for me. We started with the dom. We ended with this young lady. I think that's a nice book and on our show today. Uh, Andy, thank you for your openness and your uh, you're willing to come forward. And I hope you're still awake. Are you still there? I'm still here, Drew. Good. And uh, happy to give it to you. Thanks for being my my safe space. I I appreciate I, you, bro. I, I'm uh, honored to have been so. And we will see you all next time. Drew, one two nine. Suck my dick. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.